What is a horse? Quadruped, tail and mane. That is enough to draw a horse. But a horse is also exactly the right scale for the magnification of a man, for making him magnificent. A man standing on a table or a chair is ridiculous, but on a pedestal, we begin to let him grow. But put the man on a horse, and hopefully the horse on a pedestal, and you have a hero or a tyrant, or at any rate, someone who has made a name for himself. A horse also fits so snugly under the legs. It is not just connected to the person, but part of him, an extension of the person to show who he really is. We both make the horse part of us, an attribute or demonstration of our own might. The horse becomes an anthropomorphic prop. But more than that, we absorb the hoarseness into ourselves. An uprightness of posture from Marcus Aurelius on the Campidoglio in Rome to Verrocchio's, Verrocchio's mercenary Bartolomeo Colleone in Venice, the eye of the horse and the eye of the conditiero to Simon Bolivar in Central Park. Being a man is not enough. Being a rhinoceros is not enough. For Marshal Zhukov on his horse outside the Kremlin in Moscow, even sitting on the horse is not enough. He stands in the stirrups, a child on tiptoe playing at riding. The ghosts of Don Quixote and Rosinante follow them all. We suck in the energy and strength of the horse, then sit up straight to show that you are worthy of this transfer of power. Through our posture, convincing the horse of our divine right to ride him.